بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with some peace and blessings upon his beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he, that he allows me to convey what I want to convey in the best of ways, and inshallah, in a manner that we can all, inshallah, absorb and comprehend. See, my brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered the believers to be the people of truth. You and I as Muslims, we've been ordered to speak the truth, even if the truth be against yourself. Muslim is a person that always speaks the haq, always. Even if it's against yourself, even if it's against your family, even if it's against the Muslims, to speak the truth, to speak the word of haq. And I don't just mean in terms of deen. Please, those brothers that are recording, fucking kindly ask you to put your phones away, please. Those brothers that are recording, to kindly put your phones away. To be a person of truth, my brothers, is not an easy thing. If you were to ask me on any given day that Hublos, are you a person of truth? What's going to flow off my tongue is obviously, yes, of course I am. But my brothers, the reality is when push comes to shove, our colors show. You see, my brothers, you and I as believers, our allegiance is to Allah and His Prophet. Now, what I'm, you know, now what I'm saying to you may come across as, duh, of course, why are you even saying that? You and I as believers, our allegiance is to Allah and His Prophet before anyone and anything else. And while we all agree that yes, of course, my allegiance is to Allah and His Prophet, inshallah, I will soon, you know, I will, I will soon show you that when we're pushed and when we're cornered, you find that our allegiance is actually not to Allah and His Prophet. I want to share an incident that happened with me personally many years ago when I was in high school. And I swear by Allah, this incident till this day, it eats me in my heart. So one particular day we were at school and we used to have this student at school. I don't know why, but for some reason he was accused of being a Jew. I don't know why, wallahi, he was... So you can imagine, Birang boys, the Olebas, and one kid for some, Anyway, for whatever reason, he was accused of being a Jew. No one really had proof, but his surname was Israel. So now you can imagine this guy being accused of Jew, wherever he went, kafet, slaps, tah, 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 tah. He became the mockery of the school. Anyway, one particular day, now this guy, obviously, he wasn't liked much. So one particular day, wallahi, I will never forget this day. We were sitting, all the boys were sitting down. All the boys were sitting on the stairs, and try to imagine this, so, you know, like there was a set of stairs. All the boys were sitting, and that day, subhanAllah, I was the only one standing. And all the boys were sitting and we were talking and giving back and forth. So this young kid, he ended up coming into school one day and I remember he had bought a brand new phone. At the time it was a Nokia 8810. For those of you that remember, it's back in the whoop. It was that little chrome slide phone. It was a thousand dollars back then. Now this kid, he was very happy with his phone and I don't know why, what possessed him. But he came to show it to us. You never show a liver your new phone, bro. Anyway, so he came, he's very excited. We're sitting there, we're all having fun. So he showed the phone to one kid, and of course I'm watching this. The phone went from one hand to another, one hand to another, until eventually one of the boys decided to take his phone and put it in his pocket. And I seen this with my own, I seen the person that I, I seen it in front of me. Now, of course, if you ask me, is your allegiance to Allah and His Prophet? I tell you, of course, my allegiance is to Allah and His Prophet. You see, my brothers, when your allegiance is to Allah and His Prophet, then your allegiance is to the Haq, it's to the truth. And Allah has ordered the believers to speak the truth, even if the truth be against yourself. Now, while we all agree, you will soon come to see that it's very hard to implement. We all claim that we do it, but really, in truth, when push comes to shove, my allegiance is not to Allah and His Prophet and the Haq. So anyway, where's my phone, my, where's my phone? Give me the phone back, my, give me my phone back. My. And not just that, yeah, I need to add salt to my wound. The brother that took the phone was a brother I didn't like much. So while this was happening, this brother, the one that his phone just got stolen, he turned to me and he said to me, did you see who took my phone? 
did you see who took my phone? Now, of course, I did see who took his phone. But this guy, he's not liked very much. Apparently, he's a Jew. Like that matters, Yanni. But look how we are programmed. Like the fact that he's a Jew now, all of a sudden, gives me the right to do something that's haram. Now, my brothers, I was in a very sticky corner. Because if I say who did take the phone, well, then what does that make me? <laughs> Let's make you a kalb. <laughs> Unfortunately, now that, yeah, th th this is, you see, because we claim that we live according to Allah and His Prophet and the Sunnah, but really we don't. We actually live like gangsters, and that's the truth. Our life is closer to the life of criminals than really what it is to the life of the Sahaba. Now, I'm put in a situation where I did see what happened. I just seen this person get, yeah, and he was robbed in front of my eyes. Someone was oppressed in front of my eyes. And then he's asking me a clear, and it wasn't like a question that's, you know, maybe I can, did you see who took my phone? So I looked him dead in the eyes. I said, him, and I said to him, look, I didn't see anything, man. Wallahi, I will never forget the look on his face. Because he knew from that moment on that he was never going to find it. Until this day, Wallahi, that incident, it eats me up inside. You know why? Because truth be told, I was a coward on that day. On that day, I put my friends before the truth. On that day, I put what may have happened to me before the truth. On that day, a Muslim that had the opportunity in front of a Jew to show the haqq of Islam failed and failed miserably. You see, my brothers, it's very easy to claim that we're the people of the truth. Very easy. But you will soon come to see that when it comes to implementation, it's, wallahi, it's so difficult. To speak the haqq, to, to stand for the truth regardless. The Prophet, he, and imagine from Allah, even if it's against yourself, speak the truth. Why? Because our allegiance is not to human beings. Our allegiance is not to my country, it's not to my family. My allegiance is to Allah and His Prophet. You see, my brothers, one particular incident, and this is a Sahih incident. In the time of Ali bin Abi Talib, while he was Amir al muminin please, please, for the love of Allah, I will try not to take too much of your time. But I want you to leave this story with me. Imagine Ali bin Abi Talib, Amir al muminin The one who is, not only is he the first cousin of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, not only was he his so-called adopted son, and he grew up in the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ali bin Abi Talib never, ever, ever associated partners with Allah, ever. When, when Islam came, when the prophethood came, he was a young, he accepted Islam. The first young boy to ever, anyway, I can pray, sing his praises all. Not only, he was married, not, not, not only he grew up in the house of Rasulullah and his cousin, his first cousin. He got married to the greatest woman that ever walked the earth. He was the husband of the queen of the women of paradise. So one day Ali bin Abi Talib, one day his shield, his shield was stolen. Please, please, I want you to hear this story. I want you to memorize this story. And I want you to share this story. Because my brothers, wallahi, what is killing us from within, is the amount of corruption that is happening within us. There is so much corruption. Actually, now we've, it's become the norm. You and I have accepted corruption to be the norm. Corruption in the masjid. Wallahi, corruption in Muslim schools. Muslim schools. You go to enroll your kid, they tell you, mate, we're full. Then someone comes a week later and somehow his kid got in. How? How did that happen? He knew someone that knew someone. He knew someone that knew someone. 
Brothers, come to park. Wallahi, I've seen old men be turned away. I've seen ladies, ladies and their kids having to walk back because they weren't allowed in. And then a brother because, Wallah, yeah, well, because I know the sheikh. Brother, I know the sheikh. In front of other people, the gate will be open. Yeah, brother, you can come here. Lee, open corruption. And we've accepted this to be the norm. So Ali bin Abi Talib, his shield is stolen. He's walking in the marketplace. He sees a Jew again. He sees a Jew selling it in the marketplace. Imagine, imagine the circumstances, bro. What, what, what? So Ali bin Abi Talib, he comes to the shield. He's, at first, he's a bit, you know, is it, isn't it? He looks at the shield he's, and then he notices marks, he, yani marks that he bought. So he says to the Jew, he says, oh Jew, this shield belongs to me. The Jew says, listen, I have not, you know, he says, look, I know nothing of what you're talking about. The shield is mine. You want to buy, you buy. Otherwise, keep moving. Anyway, so there's a discussion now. No, it's mine. No, it's not mine. Look at the justice of Islam. I mean, the man is Amir al-Mu'mineen. Really, if he wanted to, he would have slapped the man, taken it, and not a person on earth would have opened their mouth. But now you're in a sticky situation, bro. What do you do? I'm saying one thing. He's saying something else. So he says, I'm fine, let's go to the court and sort this out. You see, my brothers, wallahi, you, yani, you know what's unfortunate is we've been led to believe, unfortunately, we've been led to believe that if you want justice, go to the West. That if you want a fair go and a fair trial, then go to the West. You know, it's, wallahi, it's unfortunately now that the deen that came to bring civilization, the deen that came to give the rights to people, now our lands are the very lands that take away the rights of people in front of our eyes. Many of us, we move to the lands of non-Muslims and, 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 and a big part of why we didn't want to go back was what? Because there's order. There's nizam. There's my rights will not be trampled on. And today we believe that if you want haq, then go to the land of the... It's the opposite. Wallahi, it was Islam that brought justice. Today, unfortunately, and this, uh, well, I've fallen into this. You look back into our countries that these people are backwards. This is the light. This is the future. Whereas really, in truth, Habibi, if it wasn't for these people, these people would have no idea what's going on. So anyway, he says to him, look, we're not going to sit here and argue, are we? Let's go to the court and sort it out. Now, you know, while this sounds nice, being a Muslim, I want you to imagine being the Jew. Hang on. I'm a Jew. You want me to go to a Muslim court. Is this not how we feel now? If I said to you that I had to go to court, what are you, you going to tell me, brother? You got no chance. Looking the way you look with the beard that's on your face, you don't stand a chance. Imagine this Jew. Hang on. You want me to go to a Muslim court, stand in front of a Muslim judge that you appointed, and stand in front of the Amir of the believers and say that the shield is mine? Habibi, what chance do I have? But they had to go, so they go to the court. Now imagine the judge. Imagine you are a judge, you've been appointed by Ali bin Abi Talib. Imagine, imagine just having to even stand in the courtroom. I mean, really, what sort of trial is there? Today, your son comes to tell you something about son. Habibi, I don't even need to hear the full story. I don't even need it. My son never lies, brother. My son never lies. Just hear that. Habib, there's nothing to hear. My son told me, and that's enough. How many times, Wallahi, how many, you know, again, my brothers, you know, being people of the truth, while it sounds nice, Habib, it's not easy. You know why it's not easy? Because if you're a man of the truth, trust me, you're not someone that's liked very much. If you're someone that speaks the haq, let me tell you, Forget non-Muslims. The first people to turn against you are your own kind. You know why? Because when you're not singing my song, Habibi, I don't want to borrow of it. 
How many times there'll be a husband and wife situation? Husband and wife, there's a dispute, you know? So sometimes you bring in the parents to sort of come to them. And sometimes the story is so black and white. The story is so crystal clear that a blind man can see. So sometimes, you know, let's just say for instance, the wife is in the wrong. The wife is in the wrong. And the story is yeah, and it's so in your face. Yeah, it's like you don't even need a judge, bro. <laughs> it's actually a mockery. So sometimes I'll turn to the Hajj, to her father. To the Hajj, well, I mean, you heard the story, right? So, yeah, I heard the story. Uh, Hajj, and it's pretty straightforward. It's true. I, I mean, it's, it's, she's, she's clearly in the wrong. Uh, yeah, she's in the wrong. Okay, great. So now we can move forward. Yeah, but what do you want me to do? That's my daughter. What do you want me to do? That's my daughter. Is your allegiance to Allah and His Prophet or your daughter? Who's your allegiance to? You see, sometimes there's you know boys in the area. One of them's running a mark and he's causing a lot of problems. Like really, it's actually getting out of hand. But he may have a brother that other boys like and respect. So you call him in, he tell him, listen brother, Wallahi, out of respect for you, we know you, we love you, we don't want things to get any bigger than what it is. Listen, your brother's doing one, two, three, four. Clearly in the wrong, clearly oppressing people, clearly harming people. Brother, look, something needs to be done. Your brother needs to be pulled up. Listen, cuz, I know, I know my brother's doing wrong. But what do you want me to do? That's my brother. And if anyone touches him, well then it's on. Because deep down, our allegiance is not to Allah and His Prophet. My allegiance is to my family. My allegiance is to my son. My allegiance is to my mother and my father before Allah and before His Prophet. That's the truth. So the Jew walks into the courtroom, he's thinking, what a wasted day. Walks into the courtroom, he stands in front of the judge. Look at the justice of Islam. So the judge says to Ali bin Abi Talib, since you're accusing the man of theft, look at, look at, look at the discussion. Since you're accusing the man of theft, do you have any proof that this shield belongs to you? So Ali bin Abi Talib, he says to me, yes, I have a witness. He says, and who is your witness? He says, my son, Al Hassan. The grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Would he ever lie? I ask you by Allah, would the grandson of Rasulullah ever lie? So the judge stands there. He says to me, Amir al-Mu'mineen, you know that according to the law, I cannot take your son as a witness. Do you have anything else? He says, no, I don't. He says, well, then if that's the case, I have to rule in favor of the Jew. The Jew gobsmacked. <laughs> He's thinking, what the hell did I just see? You see, my brothers, we claim Islam is haqq. But we've never actually displayed it to people to see with their own eyes. Now the Jew, when he realizes what just happened, look, he says, listen, I confess. This shield doesn't belong to me. I found it or he stole it. I can't remember. He says, but what I've seen take place today, I have never seen in my life. I bear witness that there's no God worthy of worship except Allah. And that Muhammad is his final messenger. Speak the truth, even if the truth is against yourself. To stand for the haq, my brothers, wallahi, it's very easy. Trust me, we, we all like to claim. But when you're cornered and when you're pushed, you will soon realize who my allegiance really is to. Now, of course, there's many stories that I wanted to share. Unfortunately, I'm really out of time. But here's what I want to say. While these stories are very nice, and while we all agree that, you know, it's a very important topic and that, my brothers, being a person of the truth is not going to happen overnight. 
being a person of the truth is not going to happen because wallah, we sat down for one 15 minute talk and now I heard about truth and now all of a sudden I'm going to be a truthful person. What we don't realize is to be a person of the truth, it takes time, it takes effort, it takes years. The problem is, is that we don't even surround ourselves with people of truth. So my brothers, now that we're in the last 10 days, and I'm sure we're making dua and we're asking Allah. So Allah, I beg you to ask Allah to make us of the people of the truth. To make us of those who are not corrupted. Because corruption, my brothers, you have no idea what it does. The amount of injustice that comes from corruption. Sometimes it's actually unrepairable. So please, my brothers, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely to make us from the people of the truth. And I beg you, my brother, and I beg you that start calling things for what it is. Call it like, you know, one of the things of the old school Aussies is they have this slang. They say, call a spade a spade and don't call it a big spoon. Have you ever heard the term? Yeah? We call it anything and everything except what it really is. One of the great, one of the big mashaykh, I heard this with my own ears, one of the big mashaykh of our current time, he was having a radio, radio interview. This, this has really disturbed me because he's a very knowledgeable man, but it doesn't change that what I heard hurt me so much. So the radio announcer asked him clearly, Will I as a Christian be with you in paradise? You see, my brothers, sometimes you're cornered and it's a very difficult situation. Imagine you're a very respected sheikh. The whole nation is tuning in and you're asked, will I be with you in paradise? Now, while he didn't say yes, he also didn't say no. And by the end of the talk, he had left it out that, look, we know that the people of the truth will be in paradise. And Allah has told us in the Quran that the Jews and the Christians, while yes, there is a verse, clearly, clearly that verse is referring to those people that believed in their prophets in their time. He said, yes, Allah has told us in the Quran that we will be together in paradise. No, we're not. From the moment Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam became a prophet, every religion failed and buckled on that day. Anyone that believes in Allah, but disbelieves in Muhammad is a clear kafir. No Jannah for you, period. Now, of course, we don't go around promoting this. I don't walk around and find people, hey, you're a kafir, you're going to Jannah. No, but if I'm cornered, if I'm cornered and someone says to you clearly, hey, as a Jew, as a Christian, will I be with you in paradise? Hell no. Being people of the truth is not easy. And trust me, when you speak the hat, the first people to turn against you is your own kind. Let's just try to imitate the people of the truth. Are we ready, inshallah? Barakallah fikum, subhanahu wa ta'ala.